The following program is paid for by Main Street Living. Hi, I'm Pastor Matthew Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Starting in the late 1950s, Lutheran Hour Ministries aired a television program called This is the Life in their efforts to bring Christ to the nations. It was a critically acclaimed show that used story and drama to convey eternal truths from God's Word. And it featured actors who were just getting started in their careers. Recently, Lutheran Hour Ministries, in partnership with Main Street Living, remastered and brought to HD quality about 50 of these programs. And even though the props and styles are of the 1960s and 70s, the subject matter is still very relevant. So please sit back and enjoy this week's episode of This is the Life. I'm afraid it'll take more than barbershop trimming. Oh, I may have to take it to a doll hospital. You hear that, Betsy? You might have to go to a hospital, like me. Oh, but darling, she doesn't have rheumatic fever. She wouldn't have to stay as long as you did. Workers, I hope not. But I don't want her to go tomorrow. You wouldn't take her on your birthday, dear. Now stop worrying and put Betsy into her nightgown. All right, Mommy. Mommy? Hmm? Does Daddy have to work every night? Well, not every night, dear, but it costs a lot of money to get you well, and Daddy has to work some nights to help pay for it. I'm glad you don't have to work anymore. Oh, as soon as you're on your feet again, I'll have to go back to Daddy's barber shop. But Daddy says he don't want you to work anymore. Your daddy gets funny ideas. Come on, it's past your bedtime. Hi there. Hello, Mrs. Finn. I just made some fresh fudge, and I thought maybe you and Linda might like some. Oh, how nice of you. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Hello, Mrs. Finn. How are you? Fine. That's good. Look at what happened. Oh, my goodness gracious. But we're going to get her fixed. Do you think some of this fudge might help her? I'll say. And take some for yourself, too. Thanks, Miss Finch. <laughs> I'm sure glad you live next door. Well, fine. <laughs> Would you like a cup of coffee, Mrs. Finch? Oh, I'd love it if it isn't too much trouble. Oh, it's already made. Good. My Linda's looking fine. Oh, yes, yeah, she's getting back her old spark. That's something you've got to do, too. Oh, it shows. You've got to start getting out again, Sue. Like I said before, I'll be delighted to stay with Linda. I may take you up on that. As a matter of fact, as soon as you feel like going back to work again, I can take care of things here and it won't cost you cents. Keep me out of mischief. <laughs> oh, but you know how Chuck thinks. Which is precisely why I think you had better go back to work as soon as you can. Tell you the truth, Mrs. Finch, I'm not too happy about the situation. Well, if I had a husband who hired a cute blonde to replace me and started working nights with her, I know what I'd do. But Mrs. Finch, there's nothing to that. Sue Bradley, will you pull your head out of the sand? That blonde's being talked about all over the place and you know it. Why, she's a sneaking little tramp. But Chuck's a... He's a man, isn't he? And take it from me, my dear, all men are the same. Oh, 
Oh, thank you, sir. There you are. I certainly got to hand it to you, Marge, the way you've been bringing in business. Maybe I ought to add another chair. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Chuck, if I've been wearing you guys out. <laughs> no kidding. I'm getting Barbara's cramp. You mean banker's cramp, don't you, Al? All the dough you've been making? No fooling, Chuck. This staying up at night ain't a bad idea. Well, don't get used to it. Once I get caught up with my kids' hospital bills... Look, maybe we ought to stay up at nights all the time, huh? Oh, no, not on your life. There's only one place I want to be nights. It's home with my family. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I'm sure glad things are working out for you. Well, I certainly do appreciate the way you and Marge have been pitching in, too. Well, I appreciate your sentiments, too, Chuck. But I may as well admit I've had another offer. Huh? Ah, where? Mm -hmm. Your competition down the street. Joe's shop? Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to mention it, but uh, he made me a pretty nice offer. Yeah, if you want to play Red Riding Hood to a first-class wolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess I gave him the right answer. I told him, no thanks. I've got enough wolves around here without getting one for a boss. <laughs> oh, now, look, Marge, any time you see my fangs. Oh, Corey, you're a wife. <laughs> Yikes. I told her I'd be home a half hour ago. Well, you better get going. Jack? Yeah? Here's a little present for your daughter's birthday tomorrow. Oh, Marge, you didn't have to do this. I wanted to. Me too. Thanks, Al. Marge, Linda's sure gonna be pleased. <laughs> and many happy returns to her, Chuck. She's a living doll. You're telling me. <laughs> well, see you in the morning, huh? Okay. Good night, Chuck. Good night. Sorry I was so late getting home tonight, honey. Yes, Linda was disappointed. Well, thank heavens tomorrow's Sunday, and I won't miss her birthday. Oh, it was sure nice of Marge and Al to chip in. Yes, it was. Chuck, Mrs. Finch was over, and she offered again to take care of Linda, so maybe I could start back to work soon. Oh, now, honey. Oh, but, Chuck, this way you'll pay off Linda's bills faster. And with what you save on Marge's salary, you won't have to work nights. Look, like I've told you, from now on, you're a full-time wife and mother. But, Chuck, Linda will be going back to school, and I'll... You're not going back to the shop. And I say I am. If you're worried about Marge, she'll survive. <laughs> Oh, what do you know? A manicure is set. Just like real. And Marge said to offer you many happy returns of the day, too. Hey, I'm going to try it on Betsy. Okay. Right now? Sure. Would you show me how? Of course, darling. Because you know how to give the best manicures in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. That's a matter of opinion. I'll get some water. Daddy? Yes, honey? When Betsy's hair is fixed, could it be blonde? Well, I suppose. Like Marge's? I guess so. Marge has sure got pretty hair. I wish my hair was like Marge's. You're a little young for a bleach job, dear. Huh? It's what some people do to their hair. To fool other people into thinking they are what they aren't. Now, Sue. I like your hair just as it is, dear. Much prettier this way. And more honest. Daddy, where are you going? Out. Don't you want to see me give that to you? Mommy, why did Daddy do that? He just has a lot on his mind, dear. Let's give Betsy her manicure. Oh, hi, Sue. Hi, Marge. Where's Chuck? Oh, he's just next door at the drugstore having lunch. He just left a minute ago. Oh? I hope he told you how thrilled Linda was with your gift. Yes. Oh, and I'm so happy to hear she's doing so well. The only thing is, at the rate she's going, I'll be coming back here before much longer. 
Oh, but I thought... Well, I mean, from what Chuck said, you weren't planning on coming back to work. <laughs> oh, Chuck, has a silly idea I should stay home. But I think my place is here. Oh. Well, I wish Chuck had told me. That's why I thought you should know, so you could start looking around. But I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding another spot. Uh, no, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll do all right. I'm sure you will. Well, I think I'll let Chuck buy my lunch. Be seeing you, Marge. Yeah, bye, Sue. Oh, is Al back yet? Nope. Has anybody been in? Just soon. Oh, yeah, I just had lunch with her. Chuck. Yeah? Why didn't you tell me Sue wants to come back? She told you that? It's all right, but I, I wish you'd have mentioned it. Oh, look, Marge, no matter what she said, forget it, huh? It's just that she's tired. She doesn't know what she wants. <laughs> well, there's one thing for sure. She wants me out. Oh, don't be silly. She hasn't any reason to feel that way. When a woman's jealous, she doesn't need a reason. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. You've been swell, but I think I'd better find myself another job. No, Marge, I'm not going to let you do that. It's not fair. I'll talk to Sue. It's just that, well, she's all mixed up. And I think I know who's mixing her up, too. <laughs> And I don't even want Miss Finch near this house again. Chuck, calm down. If I'm willing to go back to work and help... But you don't pay. have to. We're making out. But I want to. Yeah. You mean you feel it's your duty to get rid of Marge. Isn't that it? Why don't you be honest, Chuck? You don't want to let her go. Of course I don't. She's the best manicurist I ever had. Next to you. Thanks for the mention. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sue. Look, we've been through a pretty rough time with Linda. Let's not get all tangled up into another one of these silly fights. What do you say? It's up to you, Chuck. You know how I feel. D don't touch that. The wig has to dry. I see you got a black one. Yes, it stays cleaner longer than blonde. You're going to wear out the floor, Chuck. Well, the customers sure haven't. One lousy haircut all night. Yeah, but think of all the wear and tear we're saving on the shears, huh? And on the cash register, too. Well, it's a warm night. Yeah. Marge, you might as well go home. Oh, I don't mind, Chuck. It's only 8 o'clock. Oh, go on. If anybody comes in for a manicure, they can bite their nails. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, you're the boss. Look, Chuck, why don't you run along home, too? I'll stick around to close up. No, we're liable to have a last-minute rush. The way you're feeling, you'll probably slit a throat. Go on, take a powder. I'll close up. All right. Maybe I will. Hey. What are you doing, Marge? Practicing for Christmas? <laughs> no, I just thought it was time I started fixing up that new apartment of mine. <laughs> well, come on, I'll drive you home. Oh, no, thanks, Chuck. I'll manage. Oh, it's early yet. But it's right out of your way. Oh, that's all right. It'll give me a chance to cool off. <laughs> no, no, Chuck, really, I No, 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 it's all settled. I'll drive you home. Besides, there's some guy in your neck of the woods that I might want to see. Well, okay. If you're sure it's all right. It's fine. Here, give me these. Okay, thanks. Good night, Al. Good night, Al. Good night. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Finch. Lindy and Beth. 
She was tired. The heat, I guess. Oh, must be setting a record. Oh, and poor Chuck's working late tonight. Oh? Tried to get him to stay home and take it easy, but you know Chuck. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Oh, Sue, I hate to tell you this. But if Chuck said he was working late tonight, I'm afraid he's changed his plan. Oh? You see, I just came from the drugstore, and as I was leaving, I saw Chuck coming out of the barbershop with that girl. Marge? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure they were just getting a breath of air. Well, the way they drove off in his car, I don't think it was air they were after. I'm sorry, my dear. I went through this once, too. It seems unbelievable it can ever happen, but it does. How long ago did you see them leave, Mrs. Finch? Oh, a few minutes ago, round eight. Now, Sue, pull yourself together. I'm all right, Mrs. Finch. If there's anything I can do... No, no, thank you. Well, I guess I'd better get on home. If there's anything I can do at all, just call. No, thank you, Mrs. Finch. Yes, I think I can see you on Thursday. Thursday about four o'clock. Fine. Thursday at four. I'll see you then. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. I'm sorry for the interruption, Chuck. Please go on. No, that's all right, Pastor. Well, after I took Marge back to her apartment, I, well, I rode around for a while. In fact, it was quite a long while. I was trying to figure out something. Then I saw your light, and, well, I hate to bother you, Pastor. Chuck, that's one of the reasons I'm here. But this business with Marge... Well, Sue's been jealous before, but... Tell me, has your wife ever had any reason to feel this way? If she had, Pastor, I wouldn't be here. Yes, I see your point. Well, that's what's so crazy about this whole thing. It's difficult sometimes to know just why a person becomes infected with jealousy. It's... it's like a sickness. And I'd get rid of my manicurist and two shakes of a lamb's tail if I thought it'd cure anything. But I know that Sue doesn't want to go back to work. She's told me so. Is your wife at home now? Well, yes, she is. Well, I have to go out of town tomorrow, but if it's all right with you, why don't we go over to your place now for a little chat? Maybe I can help to sort of clear the atmosphere. Oh, Pastor, I sure be grateful. All right, let's go. Oh, hi, Sue. Where's Chuck? Well, he just left a few minutes ago. With Marge? Yeah, he was going to drop her off at her place. She had a lot of bundles, and there wasn't too much business tonight, so... Al, how long has this been going on? How long's what been going on? Don't act dumb. Huh? How long's Chuck been running around with Marge? Running around? Oh, now, wait a minute, Sue. You're way off the beam. All right, skip it. Forget I asked. Look, Sue, believe me, I... What's her phone number? Well, she doesn't have one yet. She just moved into a new apartment. Well, then what's her address? I don't know. I've got it here someplace, I guess. I'm telling you, Sue, you've made an awful mistake. I sure have. What is it, Al? Okay, here it is. 976 Hillcrest, apartment B. Oh, look, Sue, you and I have known each other a long time. I'm telling you straight, don't go jumping to conclusions. Sue, you've got to believe me. Answer I can... the phone, it may be Chuck. <sighs> Hello, Chuck's Barbershop, Al speaking. Huh? Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, slow down. What? Well, Mrs. Bradley's here. Well, just a minute. Sue, you better take this. Yes? Oh, Sue, you've got to get home. Fast. Well, what's wrong? It's Linda. She's been hurt real bad. Linda? What happened? Just get home, Sue. Fast. <laughs> Take 
it easy, Sue. Don't touch it. Her back may be injured. We've sent for the ambulance. I'll, uh, I'll stay only a minute. I thought I heard you come in. How's Linda? Is she going to be all right? Well, she regained consciousness, but they've given her something to make her sleep. There's not much they can do until morning. Well, I've made some coffee, so you all just sit down and rest while I get it. Mrs. Finch, I still don't understand. What, just what happened and how you found her? Well, I came back over here to see you again, Sue. And I heard her screaming as she was coming down the steps. Where had you been, Sue? Why did you leave her alone? I went to get you. Me? Why? You ought to know. What are you talking about? You and Marge. Mrs. Finch saw you leaving together. Saw us? You mean you... I felt it only right that Sue should know. Sue, I don't know what you were told, but I can vouch that Chuck spent the evening with me at the church. All he did was give Marge a lift to her apartment. He was with you? That's right. Mrs. Finch, so help me. Chuck, let me know. All right. Just get out of All this right. house. All right. Honestly, Mr. Bradley, I'm sorry. Lou, Just I get out. Chuck. Let's go, Mrs. Finch. <laughs> I'll be right back. What's the verdict, Chuck? Yeah, she's got a couple of cracked vertebrae. Gonna have to stay in traction. Ah, that's rough. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Chuck. How's Sue taking it? Uh, she's gone to pieces. Well, give her a couple of days. She'll snap out of it. I hope so. Chuck, I've been thinking the best thing I can do is just get as far away from here as possible. Oh, my, that's not going to do any good now. If you quit, it only makes Sue feel worse. She isn't blaming you, only herself. Sue, it's nearly midnight. Can't this wait until morning? I'm going to finish it. But you cleaned the carpet yesterday. I'm going to finish it. What are you trying to prove? Just got to keep busy. Look, honey, why don't you come over and sit down? Sue. Sue, baby, you're running yourself into the ground. Chuck, I just can't sit and do nothing and think about Linda. But she's better. It still doesn't change what I did. Oh, Chuck, can't you understand? I, I'm going out of my mind. Because you won't forgive yourself. How can I? I'd just like to start running and keep running until I drop. Sue, when Pastor Martin gets back, why don't you go see him? I couldn't face him. You've got to. I'm sure he could help. So I, I promised Chuck I'd come to see you. I don't know what you can do. I, well, I mean, Pastor, I think this is something I have to get over myself. I'd say you're already over the first hurdle, Mrs. Bradley. I'm not so sure. Chuck says he's forgiven me, but how can I tell he isn't just saying that to make me feel better? I'm sure you can believe him. I know Chuck, and I know how much you mean to him. I, I don't know, Pastor. Sometimes I think I'm losing my mind. I can't face my husband. I, I can't face his friends. I, I can't face myself. I can't face anybody anymore. Now, Mrs. Bradley, I know that we can talk this out, but you must get hold of yourself. That's better. 
Mrs. Bradley, whenever we find it impossible to face ourselves, we can be pretty sure it's our conscience that we can't face. And our conscience is there to remind us of our sins. I know I've sinned, Pastor. I've been jealous. And because of my jealousy, my little girl has suffered. That's what I live with every hour of the day and every hour of the night. That's why I'd like to give you a brand new thought to live with. The thought of God's love and forgiveness. You know, he is willing to forgive you, no matter what you've done. Not me. Yes, you. That's why our Savior died. To remove the stain of guilt from every human conscience. And because he died, there's no sin which God the Father does not stand ready to forgive. That's his promise, Mrs. Bradley, to all who repent and put their trust in Christ the Savior. But, Pastor, how, how can I face Chuck and our friends? Let's take one step at a time. But we must take the first step first. Once we've learned to face God through Jesus Christ, his son, then we can face our friends and our fellow men. Stop for the hospital, honey. Oh, I'm ready, darling. <laughs> you know, with all those gifts, Linda's liable to stop believing that coming home from the hospital is like having a birthday. Well, they couldn't be happier. <laughs> Except there's just one thing. What's that, honey? Well, this gift for Marge. Well, what about it? Well, I, I think we ought to take it back. Oh, now, Sue. And ask Marge if she'd mind exchanging it for a doll with blonde hair. <laughs> I think she'd be flattered. <laughs> Chuck. Yeah, honey. Um, how do you think I'd look as a blonde? Don't you dare change, ever. All right, I promise. Come on, honey. Lend us way. I hope you found this program to be both entertaining and insightful. Even though the show was filmed decades ago, the concerns of those days seem to parallel many situations of today. We'll be back next week with another episode of This is the Life. In the meantime, I invite you to seek further wisdom from God's Word, the Bible, and I invite you to visit one of our congregations in your area. We are the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and you will find our 6,000 congregations listed at www.lcms.org. This program has been brought to you by Main Street Living, which relies on the generosity of viewers to support this programming. They appreciate your prayers and would also appreciate your financial support. You can view additional episodes of This Is The Life on the Main Street Living website. Thanks for watching and join us again next week, same time, same channel, for another episode of This is the Life. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.